Good morning, and welcome to Menus Around Milwaukee, where each week we'll be getting a behind-the-scenes look at Milwaukee's finest restaurants and master chefs. I'm Bonnie Montgomery. Today we're joining you from Silver Spring Country Club's La Par Restaurant. It's located just seven minutes west of Highway 45 on Silver Spring Drive. Silver Spring Country Club offers a whole new concept in country clubs, which accounts for their tremendous popularity and growth. Since opening in March of 1986, Silver Spring Country Club has expanded to include Tremont Hall, with seating up to 500, and the Sand Trap Lounge, with seating for up to 150. Let's meet the general manager, Don Bowman. Thanks for joining us today, Bonnie. Thanks for inviting us here, Don. One of my first impressions about the Silver Spring Country Club is that I think if I were just driving by, I would probably think that it was a private club, mm -hmm. but that's not true. No, it isn't. We're open to the public. Mm -hmm. And like I said, one of the things that makes me think that it's private is that it's such a beautiful golf course, and this facility is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, now, your restaurant is called what? The restaurant is called the La Par mm -hmm. Restaurant. And tell us what we can find there. Well, we're open for lunch and dinner, and you can find a variety of different entrees. For lunch, we have a lot of sandwiches. We also have hot luncheons. The prices range from about $3.95 to $6.95 for lunch. Dinner, we have specialized in steaks and seafood. We also have veal dishes and some poultry, vegetarian items, things such as that. And the dinner prices range from about $8.95 to $16.95. Okay, that sounds like a good price range. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable. Give us some examples of specifics that we can find on the menu that we might know. Well, for lunch we have things such as a seafood broil, which is a blend of different types of seafood in a wine sauce. Mm -hmm. We have a Monte Cristo sandwich. Oh, yeah. Um, different kinds of stack sandwiches, which would be your choice of different kinds of meats, the ham or roast beef on top of a, a French roll. Mm -hmm. For dinner, we have Tornados Racino, which is twin medallions of beef. We also have things such as string of pearls or Cornish game hens topped with a raspberry puree sauce. String of pearls, that sounds interesting. What That's is that? That's very nice. It's a, a shish kebab type item, but it's served with lobster pieces, scallops, and shrimp and then that's topped with a delicate wine sauce. Sounds wonderful. And when is the restaurant open? The restaurant is open Monday through Sunday, mm. seven days a week. We're okay. just closed on Monday nights during the winter time, though. Yeah, we should remind people that it is open during the winter. Right. A lot of times I think of places that are on golf courses as just completely shutting down. Mm -hmm. So that's We're good open year-round. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the view here in the winter is mm -hmm. unbelievable. Nice? Oh, it's beautiful. And you do have a Sunday brunch, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. That's great for people to know that. Right. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Right, that's their yes. 10 to 3. Let them know what's on that <laughs> menu. So, um, also, let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, golf course, because that's pretty special. Yes, it is. It's an 18-hole championship course. I think it's one of the finest in the area. We have an island green, which people just love. Yeah, <laughs> you get to I'm hit sure. the ball over, cross the bridge, and Have find you ever it. played that one yourself? I have, and I always carry my ball over to the other mm -hmm. side. I'm sure it frustrates plenty of people. So, that's a, like I said, it's a beautiful golf course. And um, you have facilities here, halls for uh, gatherings. Right. We can accommodate groups anywhere from 10 to 500 people. Mm -hmm. What are the halls that you have? We have a Tremont Hall that was expanded to in 1988. And that's where we are right, right. now. Right. Mm -hmm. This one will hold up to 500 people, but it can also be divided into four separate halls to accommodate smaller groups. Mm -hmm. Then we just added on a hall called Sand Trap Lounge last year, mm -hmm. and that can accommodate up to about 150 people. Now, since you said that you have added on, why don't you tell us a little bit about how this place started? Well, originally it was a farm estate from the 1800s, mm. and we tried to maintain a lot of the things, the fireplace, the wood beams, and the ceiling and mm. such, and we gutted out what we needed to and made the restaurant. Mm -hmm. As we've been saying, this is just a beautiful facility, and I guess during the summer there's something special that people can come to. Was it the balcony or a patio? Right. The Tremont Hall has a rooftop patio uh -huh. attached to it, and it's really nice. It gives you the second floor view of, of the countryside and the golf course. Uh -huh. And this would be something that we would rent to, right. like a hall? Right. Mm -hmm. That's rented as a hall. A lot of weddings like to use it for cocktails beforehand. Ah, yes. that's great. Right. And then you do have facilities within the, the um, dining area 
right? The right, we have two smaller rooms over in the dining area, so those we put our groups from 15 to 40. Oh, that's wonderful. So tell us where we can call for reservations. Well, you can call 252-4994 for reservations, or if you wanted to book a banquet, you could just call that same number and ask for John Weishel, our sales manager. Mm -hmm. And we should remind people that if they rent a hall, it can be catered here. Everything is catered through us, uh -huh. yes. That's great. So we have a wonderful facility, golf course, and restaurant. Coming up on menus around Milwaukee, we're going to talk to Chef George Waller, and he's going to be showing us one of his specialties. That's coming up. Welcome back to Menus Around Milwaukee, and now I'd like to introduce you to the chef at the Silver Spring Country Club, La Par Restaurant, and that is George Walner. George, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Bonnie. Welcome to Silver Spring. Thanks. Now, I understand you're going to be cooking some beef for yes. us, is that correct? Yes. And you will be making what for us? Tornados Rossino. Well, that sounds uh, good. A menu item on our evening dinner menu. Okay. Now, first of all, before we get into that, I think one of the questions we all would like to ask a chef, if we had the chance, is how do we go to the store and pick meat? What do you look for in your meat? Well, what I look for in meat, particularly with a tenderloin, is I like to have a nice, firm piece of meat. Uh, you'll see that that's nice and firm. It's not jello-y, hmm. which means that this is a nice prime choice uh, steer tenderloin. That's what we look for in tenderloin. The second thing we'd look for is some marbling. You don't want completely red meat. You'd like to have a little of the, the fat marbling throughout the meat, which makes it nice and tender and much more flavorful. Uh, so when, when you go shopping in the store, don't pick the reddest piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Pick some meat that has a little bit of marbling in it, and you'll find it's much more flavorful mm -hmm. and tender. Would we be able to feel that through a package if it was wrapped? Yes, you would. Now, chances mm -hmm. are you're not going to find uh, steer tenderloin in the store. Uh, oh, it's it's okay. rather expensive. What you're going to find in, primarily in stores is a house-choice cow tenderloin, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is, is perfectly satisfactory, but we like to use the better cut uh, mm -hmm. here at Silver Spring. Now, when you were talking about the color of the meat, I, I think that's interesting. Now, obviously you see different shades of reds and mm -hmm. almost a brownish color. What kind of a shade should we be looking for besides well, the I marbling would, part? I would look for something in between. The reddest meat is probably not aged at all. Oh. And we like to use aged meat, which means it has to sit uh, uh, on the shelf or in your refrigerator for a period of time, which will tend to discolor it somewhat. But it's a better, uh, better cut of meat at that point. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. What else do you have there on that plate? What is that? Uh, this is just some fresh liver sausage, which we're going to use in the preparation of the dish. Uh, it complements the meat, and with the flavor of the sauce, it all comes together rather nicely. Uh -huh. Well, how long have you been a chef? I've been a chef now for eight years. I, uh, I've been in many different, many different uh, restaurants here in Milwaukee, and uh, prior to that, all through my schooling, uh, I was uh, cooking and started out my, my jobs in a hospital kitchen, oh. doing pots and pans. So. so along these eight years, what would you say is your favorite sort of thing to prepare? Uh, I like to prepare steaks and I like to do saute work. Uh, veal dishes, I, I think, are my specialty. Oh, great. And what are the most favorite dishes that you serve here at La Par? Well, our steaks are, are our best sellers. Uh, oh. We do sell uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, orange roughy here and uh, some of our uh, uh, stuffed filet of sole, um, our Cornish hen with uh, port wine sauce is also very well received. Mm -hmm. Steaks are the biggest item. Well, then they must be good, so let's find out what your secrets are. How about if you prepare this for us? Okay, fine. What I'm going to do here first is in, the, in this small saute pan, I have a little bit of bacon grease. And I'm going to just take the liver sausage and let it saute for a little while in the bacon grease. And while I'm doing that, I'll get my other saute pan set up here. This probably should have been a little bit hotter. I was going to say, I what kind of stove. a heat is that on? That's Medium. on a low, a low heat. Okay. Now with the other pan, I'm going to start the uh, sauteing of the tenderloin medallions. And I have a little bit of clarified butter here, just to put in the pan. Clarified get this butter. nice and hot. Yes, uh, clarified butter. You just melt uh, a pound of butter down, let it settle, and only use the top portion of the butter. All oh. the fats and solids settle to the bottom, and the clarified butter settles on top. Why is that better for cooking? It doesn't burn. Oh. It doesn't scorch. So we could use that any time we were using butter then? Yes. Oh. Good hint. Now we'll just start those. Do you usually 
usually only do two pieces of meat like that for a pan this size, yes, or could you put right. more in? Just two for a pan that size. Yes. Okay. Does that make a difference how, mit, how much meat you put in the pan? You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Uh -huh. If you do, you'll get uneven cooking. And then just let that go. Meanwhile, our liver sausage is just getting nicer. And I'm just going to take this off for a moment. And here. what kind of a heat do we have here? Is this, this seems is on a high heat for yeah. right now, but I'm going to turn it down slightly. It did seem like the pan is awfully hot here. Yes. Uh -huh. You want to cook in a, in a hot pan. If, you, if your pan is too cold to begin with, your meat is going to stick to the pan. Oh. It's kind of like, all right, preheating an oven, you preheat yes. your pan. Well, it looks good. <laughs> it's good already. It's awfully hot here, George. Uh, as a chef, are you used to the heat back here? Oh, yes, very much yeah? so. I, I don't feel that it's too hot right now. In the summer months, it gets rather hot. Ah. But we're fortunate here at Silver Spring to have an air-conditioned kitchen, which is something I uh, you rarely find. The luxury it's very, for very you. very nice here. Great. This kind of a dish, do the uh, customers um, ask for it a, a rare, medium rare? Oh, is this yes. the kind of thing that oh, I yes. see? It can be prepared to, to temperature. Mm -hmm. Do you find that tricky to be able to get it at rare, medium, rare? Well, well it can be. Uh, people have uh, have varying ideas as to what medium rare or rare actually is, but for the most part, uh, with years of experience, it becomes second nature just to know when it's going to be done. So to a chef, what are the different categories? What would rare, medium, rare, whatever be? A rare steak would be still red and rather cool in the middle, uh -huh. in the interior. A medium rare steak would be a, a pinkish color with still some of the uh, some of the natural juices in the meat, and it would be warm. Uh, a uh, a medium steak would be now more uh, more well done, but still retaining a little bit of the pink color on the interior, and it would be more warm than than the medium rare. And of course, the medium well and well done steaks are just uh, are done all the way through. All right, and this is a universal guide. Well, it is a okay. universal guide as far as, as, far as, as chefs do that. Okay. Yes. That's good for us to know. Well, I think I'm going to start to finish the dish here. All right. <clears throat> it's probably pretty rare right now, but I like mine so rather do I. rare. That's a good idea. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding... I don't want to do that yet. First, I want to add some Madeira wine to the pan. Just let that reduce. Whoa. And flame a little bit. <laughs> a little bit more. Adventures in cooking here. And we just let that reduce a little bit. While that's bubbling nicely, we'll just add a basic brown stock, brown sauce. What is in that? A brown, so a brown sauce is made from uh, beef bones, which are browned in the oven and then placed in a stock pot with various herbs and, and vegetables and allowed to simmer for a long period of time. And after that has simmered, say overnight, uh, you remove the bones, uh, strain off the uh, vegetables and the herbs, and you use the remaining stock to make your sauce. And you thicken your sauce with a little bit of roux. A roux is nothing more than clarified butter and flour mixed together and cooked a little bit on the stove and it's used as a thickening agent. Now I want to take my liver sausage and place that right on top of each of the medallions here. Mm. I'll let that sit for a little while. And that's basically it. Now we're ready to put it on our plate. Put them both on the plate, and then we use the remaining reduced sauce from the pan mm, and put it smells good. on top. Back. This. I'm ready to dig in. Now what, what I like to do with this dish, I'll just set this here for now, is I like to garnish it with uh, a few 
onion straws. And with these, I just take some very thinly cut onion rings and dredge them in a little bit of milk, which helps to hold the onion flavor in and also allows us to coat them and fry them with butter. I mean, in the deep fryer, not with butter. Can we do that at home, even if we don't have a deep fryer? Certainly, you can do these right on, uh, right on the stove in a saute or a skillet, skillet pan. Now we just take these, okay. shake a little bit of the flour off, and drop them right into the fryer. And we'll let those go. And, and we'll let them go. Let's take a look once again at our final product. I think uh, I might have a little bite of this. We're gonna go to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to see some house specialties at Lapar. That's coming up. Thanks, George. You're welcome. And now on menus around Milwaukee, Dawn has joined me again, and we are going to dine together finally. So here we can see our, our finished product of, what was that called again? That's Tornados Ficino. All right, I always forget how, what that's called. And we see the onions on there. It looks wonderful. And what else do we have here? The other entree is the seafood broil that has a blend of crab, scallops, and baby shrimp. And that's in a sherry wine sauce and topped with cheese, served on top of wild rice. And oh, it has garlic great. croutons with it. Boy, now this is one of your most popular items, isn't it? Right, and that's an item that's nice. You can get it both on lunch and dinner. Oh, great. And next? Next we have the steak and, shish and seafood shish kebabs. It's the, just uh, alternating the steak and the seafood on the two different kebabs, and they're both served with the green peppers, onions, and tomatoes on top of two different types of rice. And they each oh. have their own special sauce. The steak has a teriyaki sesame sauce, and the seafood gets an orange sauce that has just a touch of horseradish. Mmm, that sounds wonderful. So it's kind of like a surf and turf. If right. We can't make up our mind, we you get, get both. both. That's great. What kind of meat is this? That's tenderloin. Oh, so it's like our first one. Right. Mm, very good. And what kind of wine would we serve or, or ask for with all of these? Well, what I would recommend with the two meat items would be the Robert Mondavi Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. And with the seafood broil, we have a very nice Mandavi again, uh, Chardonnay. And if we didn't want alcohol, what would we? We have a, a large wine list available with different kinds of wine. We also have non-alcoholic wines and champagnes available on that. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, now, uh, these are a couple of your specialties that right. we're seeing here. Right. Okay. And um, the middle one you said is on the lunch and the other two? Are strictly on dinner. Okay, great. Now let's talk a little bit about the Sunday brunch because I hear it's wonderful. Yeah, that's very nice. Uh, the Sunday brunch is a champagne brunch and it also has made to order omelets, waffles, crepes, a large number of different types of desserts. We have breakfast items like eggs benedict, scrambled eggs, sausage, and we try to keep variety in it by changing some different luncheon items each week. Oh, I see. Now is this something that we order off the menu or is it a buffet? It's a buffet style, so oh. you can choose whatever you'd like and have as much of it as you like. Sounds good. That's a Sunday brunch. And speaking of Sunday brunches, we can get them lots of places. What makes yours special? I think what makes ours special is we have cooks actually preparing the omelets for you. You can choose what you'd like. We have different kinds of seafood, peel and eat shrimp. We have the smoked salmon and there's a nice variety on ours. Sounds wonderful. Let's reiterate one more time some of the special uh, things about the Silver Spring Country Club. Now it is a golf course and you right. have halls available, mm -hmm. right? Right. We also have the rooftop patio. We can do groups from anywhere from 10 to 500 people. Mm -hmm. And we are, once again, sitting in one of these right. halls. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love about this is that we can have the hall and we can look out the window mm -hmm. and the golf course is just beautiful. Right. It's really a unique hall. Most places are four walls. We have the windows. And yeah. This is nice. And um, also, if we rent the hall, we can get the food too, right? Right. All of our catering is done on premises. Mm -hmm. And for reservations? For reservations, you can call 252 or 994 and we take them anytime. And when are you open? We're open seven days a week. We are closed on Mondays now during the winter season, but otherwise we're open for lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. And if we wanted to rent a hall, um, do we have to call you pretty far in advance, or how's it going? Right now, Saturdays are almost booked through 1991, so okay. we do book fast, but we do still have some of the winter months of those that year available. Okay. Otherwise, you can come in any time during the week. We do have a sales manager, John Weichel, who would be happy to help anyone with those details. Good. Well, obviously popular, very popular, so good. Now, once again, finally, 
we have to reiterate that this is a public place. Right. We're strictly public. We have no members. Yeah. And so anyone can join us. That's great, Don. Now, as I've been here today, I've been noticing that this is the kind of place that I've always thought a private club would be mm -hmm. like with a lovely golf course and, and the restaurant and everything. And, and it's surprising that it is public. And, and that's a wonderful yeah. thing to know that we can just come here. It's great. So I think it's time that we dig in here. Okay. I'd like to try this one over there. Okay. If you don't mind swapping sure, since I was fine. in on the cooking yeah. of it. <laughs> Maybe we can share what we have here. Okay. Now, Thanks for being with us, Don. And while we enjoy this, how about if you take a look at some other restaurants around Milwaukee? Ooh. With that, we're out of time for this week's show. I'd like to thank everyone from Silver Spring Country Club's La Par Restaurant. Next week, we'll be joining you from the Red Circle Inn. I'm Bonnie Montgomery. I'll see you next Sunday on Menus Around Milwaukee. Menus Around Milwaukee is made possible by these five.